Hi. Um, so like Alex said, I'm Dale Kuntz. Oh, wait, sorry. Two different slides here. Here we go. Does this work? No. Technology, right? OK. I'm Dale. Uh, uh, like Alex said, I work for the American Red Cross. Um, I love missing maps. So I love OSM. And I'm also on the hot board. Um, let's see here. This is still very confusing. So three years ago at State of the Map San Francisco, um, I've been working for the Red Cross for exactly nine days. Um, when I gave my very first presentation at State of the Map, uh, because Robert Bannock, who some of you guys may know, could not come. And Bonnie, who works for Mapbox at the time, uh, was very insistent that we should talk about what we do. Um, so I'm not new here. Um, but I felt welcome from the very beginning. And a lot of the lessons that I learned at that very first State of the Map, we're still doing. And I'm going to sort of show that off later. So risk. So institutional. Institutions are, uh, are an interesting place. Like Alex said, like the, just the American Red Cross is a $3 billion a year organization. Um, there are many Red Crosses. The UN is a massive organization. There are massive companies, right, that use OSM. Um, sometimes this risk is, is perceived. Sometimes it's not really there. And then sometimes it's a real risk. And, um, and so we have to sort of mitigate it and figure out how we, want to, how we want to work with it. So for a long time, we looked at OSM as sort of Maybe we should work with it, maybe we shouldn't. You know, the mailing list is kind of crazy. Um, we don't know what's sort of what we should do. We did, though, we just decided we would jump in. We would just do it. Um, it's one of those things where I think it's one of the, the best decisions we ever made. We jumped in, much like this uh, beautiful corgi with a life jacket, with other friends that had been through the journey as well, or were starting their institutional journey, folks like the, like the State Department. Uh, at the U.S. government, um, and then hot, the HOT group, of course, back before I was really a member of HOT. But the, really the game-changing moment for us was Typhoon Haiyan in 2013, when 1,500 of our closest OSM friends sort of fundamentally made the difference about how the Red Cross and about how the humanitarian world uses OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is now sort of the definitive map during any disaster. Um, Typhoon Haiyan had 1,500 volunteers. The Ebola response had 1,800 volunteers. The Nepal response for the earthquake had 8,000. Um, and had 2,000 in the first 48 hours. Um, it's fundamentally changed the way that we sort of use OSM uh, and the way that we use map data during big disasters. However, um, many of you guys have seen this map. Um, but this is no density. So this is the, basically the density of map data for OSM around the world. It's probably, it's a year out of date now. Um, so if you want to update it, please update it. Send me the image. Um, but most of the developing world is not on the map. Uh, one of my favorite things to say is to show is this circle here, like this India, China, Malaysia, Indonesia circle. Um, three billion people live there. Um, it does not look like three billion people live there. Um, and so this is part of our problem is that a lot of these um, areas that are really vulnerable are also the places that are under mapped. So that instead of having to map for the first 48 hours very, you know, getting 2,000 mappers to map, we can get 2,000 mappers to map what changed, as opposed to mapping what was there. So that's how we created Missing Maps um, over a beer in London um, uh, with Kate Chapman, who was the hot executive director at the time, Andrew Bray from the British Red Cross, Harry Wood, who was representing hot as well, and Ivan Gaten from uh, Medicine Sans Frontiers, or Doctors Without Borders. Um, we, we started missing maps. And we've, we've since sort of, we've, we formed it because it, this was our way to sort of bring the institutional actors together around OSM. It's not, it's difficult for us as institutional actors to just say, yeah, we're going to do OSM. We sort of need a budget line item. I need a, for us at the American Red Cross, we're donor funded. I need something I can ask somebody else to fund. We can't just say we're going to do OSM. It doesn't work like that. But we've since added new members to the Clinton Foundation, Cardo NG, Netherlands Red Cross, and Heidelberg University. And we're looking to sort of add more institutional members as well. Our initial goals were 20 million people on the map and to engage 10,000 mappers in the first two years. Um, we thought that these were sort of fairly ambitious goals. We did not realize how awesome the community would be. And I'll get to sort of where we're at towards that at the end of this talk. 
So our basic process. Um, we view OSM as sort of a, uh, and our involvement in OSM and missing maps sort of as this three phase process. So step one, we do a lot of uh, remote tracing. This is the mapathons that you see. Step two is the community mapping that we do, field mapping, ground truthing, whatever you want to call it. And step three is where we actually do stuff as the Red Cross. So this is actually doing something with the maps um, or with the data that we have. So this is vaccination campaigns or reducing the amount of sort of um, hazard that people have from typhoons or storm surge rise or whatever it may be in that area. So mapathons. We do a lot of mapathons, like a lot, a lot of mapathons. Um, we have had in the in the first you know couple years, we've had 275 public mapathons in 18 months um, across all of the missing maps uh, sort of consortium members. And then we also do a lot of private mapathons. So some of you may have heard about this our corporate engagement that we do. Um, and one of the I think the unique things that we do is as Missing Maps and as a Red Cross is we encourage companies to sort of take advantage of their employee match that they have for their employees. So we have some companies that every time an employee maps for an hour for OSM for Missing Maps, that company will donate money to the Red Cross so that we can actually do our work or to continue to fund Missing Maps. So for every two hours an employee maps in some places, they can buy a cell phone for us. That goes a long way. We do a lot of ground truthing. Wow, the screen got messed up there. Um, we do a lot of ground truthing as well. People that say that we don't sort of, you know, that they give missing maps a hard time, that we're just mapathons, that we're just armchair mappers. Um, I don't think they realize the extent of how much we're actually doing field mapping. Um, this here is in is in West Africa uh, as part of a, a project we have there, um, and we're not armchair mapping. This is some of the hardest mapping you can do in OSM. Um, this, yeah. You know, some of these journeys that we that we go on to map communities and map villages are places that, during the dry season, are a five-hour drive on some of the most miserable roads you've ever driven. And in the wet season, maybe, um, maybe not, or motorbike only. Um, we also focus really heavily on building community um, and doing a lot of trainings with people, teaching people how OSM works, teaching people how mobile phones work, teaching people how laptops work, um, and making sure we leave all of that there in those communities. But then we do, what do we do with it, right? So we get a lot of criticism. Well, well I'm mapping, well, my, I'm doing my buildings, I'm doing my roads, what does that actually do? Um, I think we could do a better job of publicizing what we do with the data and the maps. Um, in this particular example, you can see the buildings were used to help make a population map for a vaccination campaign for measles uh, in the Democratic Republic of, of Congo. And this is, this is like work we could not do. Um, we also sort of, we map hazards. So this is in Riocha, Colombia. It's an area that's really, really affected by drought. We went there for two weeks and you could see sort of our extent of the neighborhoods that we work in are the red, the red neighborhoods here. But instead of just stopping there and, and only being concerned about the areas where we mapped, uh, we mapped the entire city. Um, and this was done with corporate engagement um, and really sort of being able to sort of bring a lot of people together. And so now these maps are being used to help do uh, hazard mitigation um, with the droughts there in Colombia. We do other stuff. So we collect a lot of data using Open Map Kit and other things, uh, field papers. We can structure the questions that we ask. This is really important for institutional actors. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, do you use OSM and or do you use Vespucci? What do you use to do mobile, your mobile editing? Um, all of those are great apps. They're just not structured enough for us. And this is kind of going back and back to how institutions work. Um, I want to train 100 volunteers to go do ten, to go survey 10,000 buildings, and I want them to ask the same five questions of that building every single time. Um, and to do that, we use Open Map Kit, and so here we can use the data from Open Map Kit to identify houses that are um, their building type. So the purple buildings here, if you look at are concrete, and then if you look at the map on the right, you can see that the building condition is poor in red. Um, and this is sort of a leftover holdover effect of this area in Zvarsek or Hawari where this community was uh, bulldozed uh, about 20 years prior. And the only buildings that were left were the concrete ones because they were harder for the bulldozer to push over, right? So, um, you know, we were able to then target our, our work to just the folks that are in these poor condition homes. 
In Port-au-Prince, Haiti, there's an area called Canaan that did not exist in 2010. Zero people lived here. About 250, 300,000 people live there now, six years later. Um, it's not officially or, uh, recognized part of, of Port-au-Prince. It has no services, it has no water, it has no official power, it has no official roads, um, and 300,000 people live there. Using Mapillary, Open Map Kit, um, drones, and some, and some help from the, uh, from the OSM Haiti group, we've been able to map 50,000 buildings here, um, 20,000 of which, Matt, am I getting that right, are under construction. So an additional 20,000 buildings under construction. Um, and we're able to use all of this data sort of in, in a lot of different ways to sort of inform how we work. So in Canaan, we're using the road data and the house data um, to inform where we put um, or where we put investment for infrastructure, for new roads, or where we invest in schools or evacuation centers or in water uh, locations. And this all sort of leads to um, our biggest project. I think most of the projects to date that, that I've shown here are sort of small projects. They're a couple week long projects. Um, they're big, you know, 50,000, 70,000 um, buildings or features. Uh, but then in West Africa, sort of we're scaling things up to a, a very, very large scale. Um, we're trying to map an area the size of Switzerland, um, and we're trying to do that um, in four months. Um, we're trying to include, sort of basically build on all of the remote work that was done by the hot volunteers during Ebola, and then ground truth it. Um, I think this might be the biggest ground truth project that has happened, I don't know, please correct me if I'm wrong, I'd love to, to know. Um, but it's, it's 5,000 communities um, training several hundred volunteers um, in how to use Open Map Kit, how to use OSM. Um, we've established an office in Gekadu, Guinea, which is the heart of the Ebola outbreak. Um, and they are doing all of their work there um, to sort of train other NGOs, to build up other teams that can go out and do this work so that the, sort of the work can continue past, past this. Like I said a little bit earlier, we use, um, we use a lot of the existing OSM tools. So here you can see OSM Hand, um, a beautiful Garmin camera capturing our street level uh, view of West Africa donated by Mapillary. And uh, you know, for Mapillary images, I think, I think we're around a half million that we're gonna have for West Africa. Um, that is a lot of pictures of jungle, yes. Um, but it's also a lot of pictures of sort of uh, palm oil, palm oil uh, stands and agriculture and, and signs and villages and stuff that sort of maybe sometimes we didn't notice. Um, but a lot of the tools that we use, again, thinking at an institutional scale, um, a lot of the consumer facing tools are just not the right tool for us um, because we're training 100 people. We also will, will put the consumer tool on their phone, but for our piece of mapping that we're gonna do, we just sort of need a little bit something different. So that's where we get to Open Map Kit. We love field papers, we love Android phones. Um, the ability to sort of do data collection using Open Data Kit uh, and working with some folks, we expanded that and we've uh, now created Open Map Kit, um, which is basically a sort of a map way, an OSM way, to get um, structured data into OSM. Um, and we've tied it all together, field papers, Open Map Kit with portable OpenStreetMap. Uh, Nick and Seth and Emily gave a great talk about this yesterday. If you want to ask questions about Possum, uh, please let us know. Um, but we use Possum all the time. It's not, it's not something that we, um, we created and it's going to sit in GitHub rep repository somewhere. Um, we use these. I have one of my, in our Airbnb right now that I'm doing some, some quiet mapping of a little area, right? So um, Possum is real. It's an it's awesome thing. Please contribute to it. Um, and again, this is one of our tools that we needed because we go places where there are no internet. There is no Wi-Fi. The power is on from midnight to 6 a.m. Only for AC. Promised, right? Promised for AC. Um, that doesn't really happen. Um, so the, a lot of places that we go just don't have the connectivity that you would expect in, uh, even in Seattle. Um, but then there are uh, great contexts for us for Possum as well. And sort of in, in say, Port-au-Prince where the power goes out for a couple hours a day. You want to keep working. Um, or the power is gonna go out in, in Jakarta or something for a couple hours. Um, or you really just wanna slam 120 people at a mapathon to do an area and your Wi-Fi that you have, you serve your bandwidth or whatever out to the internet is just not strong enough. Possum is a great way to sort of do all of those things. One of the, one of the other things that we needed was, we realized very early on that we had a need to sort of track our, our um, 
our users. Um, the existing sort of leaderboards and uh, stuff that Pascal Nies had done um, was, was excellent and sort of informed our work, but it was not sufficient enough for us to um, really get into what we wanted to do. So we built leaderboards in here for, if you guys want to look at the missing maps leaderboards, um, I don't know who Riv, Riv W is, um, but they've done 50, 000, almost 50,000 buildings in Swaziland, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so keep mapping. <laughs> um, uh, we do partner pages so you can sort of build community. Um, so you can really think about sort of what you want to do with um, sort of your team and your community. So you can, um, you can we've, we've made these for, for corporate partners, um, but really how awesome would it be to have a MapTime Seattle um, group and so you could see who the top mapper in MapTime Seattle was or the top mapper in uh, you know, LA Building Import or you know, whatever it is your community project is. This is a great way to sort of build community around that. One of the new things that we're really excited about is an app called MapSwipe. Um, MapSwipe.org, go download it, iOS, Android. Um, it's a fantastic way for us to get more um, data around the world. So for a large part of the world, right, you, uh, if you've done some missing maps work, you're looking at a lot of jungle or a lot of desert, um, trying to find that one village or that one house or that one road. Um, MapSwipe does it much, much faster. And then we can get the map output so you can see um, you can see sort of see settlements and you can see um, sort of roads, right? So this is very, very useful for us. 100% um, of all of the code that we develop um, is open source. It's all licensed BSD. Um, we used to license everything as uh, GPO and then we wanted sort of it to be adopted a little bit more. So we had a long talk with our lawyers. Yes, we have a lot of lawyers and convinced them to uh, let us publish everything under BSD. So take the data, please. Um, yeah. So some real talk about the community. Um, as institutions, right, we worry about risk, like I said early on. Risk is, is real for us. Um, when people yell at us on the mailing list or yell at us on Twitter or send blind emails to companies that we work with, um, like those hurt, right? And they more than hurt because then I have to write emails explaining you know, it's okay, you know, it's fine. Um, I think I, f I feel a little bit like I'm preaching to the choir with the OSM US community, um, but this is real for us. Like these concerns about the community and the vitriol that happens in the mailing list and on Twitter and other places is real. Um, and these are things that we sort of um, take great pains to try and avoid. Um, so my, my thing is if, you know, if you see somebody doing something that they should not be doing, Tell them that they should not be doing it, right? Be honest with other people within the community, whether or not they're in the OSM community or not. OSM US community. Um, one of the questions I got yesterday was, there's a lot of different organizations, there's a lot of different folks doing um, OSM. And I'm not gonna get into sort of all the partners, but just to say that these are some of the many, many logos of, of groups that are involved in OSM institutional kind of work. And uh, if you have more questions about that, uh, Mikel is a great person to talk to. He knows the, the landscape very well. Uh, he's saying no, but he, that's not true. Um, so um, yeah, come and talk to us. There's a lot of different groups doing this, um, and it's for different motivations, but you know we're all doing it for good. So where are we at? So two years ago, uh, 18 months ago, we were, we wanted we were at zero mappers. Now th I took this last night. I could probably do it again, and it would change. But we're almost at 12,000 unique mappers for missing maps, three million buildings. Um, and we've done 400,000 kilometers of road. Um, this for us is a really truly amazing number. Um, we've been able to do, like I said, 275 mapathons in 33 countries, but our biggest number there is that we put 20 million people on the map. Um, and we calculate this using sort of a bunch of different kind of weird methods. You can talk to Matt Gibb if you really wanna dig into the methodology, which is posted on GitHub as, right, as well right now. Um, but we're not done. So our big goal, right? So what are we gonna do? So in the next three years, we want to put 100 million people on the map. In the next five years, we want to put 200 million people on the map. Um, and I think this number is low. Um, I think it's a lot low. I think we as OSM community can do that um, in a much, much bigger way. Um, I think that we sort of have already proven with your help and with all the things that you guys uh, have given us through Missing Maps meetups and all the kinds of different stuff that the community does 
we're able to sort of get to this number, I think, fairly quickly. Um, and so just a simple thank you and uh, an offer. If you have a meetup that you want to do and you want to do a Missing Maps Mapathon, um, get in contact with me. We will buy your pizza. Okay? All right. Thank you. If there's any questions. Can I go back to quick slide? Quick, quick slide. First, the first slide? Yeah. The Chihuahua and the Dalmatian? Um, you two, I have a question now in the work and grid. If people get sick, people have no access to the map, uh, people need to ask the map, iPhone, Android, iPad, going to the hospital to see the doctor in the work and grid. Yeah, so we, we work really hard on sort of this digital divide problem, the connectivity problem. Um, you know, we provide um, as much information to the local community as possible that we can, trying to build up community. Um, we also sort of have learned that, you know, you don't need a $300 cell phone to map, you need a $50 cell phone, or sometimes a $10 African cell phone. Um, so just trying to, to show them that they can run these tools and they can do this stuff with their existing technology, and then just trying to build up community within the local NGO communities where we could work as well. Another question. Hello. Have you run into resistance where people do not want you to map? Um, no. So one of my favorite things that, the first thing that we do is we, when we get to a community and really before we even teach them how to do anything, we sort of show them what OSM is, we show them sort of you can put anything into it. Uh, one of my favorite stories is in Harari, Zimbabwe, and they said, well, you know, what, what do you, we asked them, what do you want to map? And, they, and one person said, we want you to map the trash piles. Um, because it's, it's illegally dumped and you know, we, do, we want those gone. This, the folks from the city of Harare were there and they said, no, you don't need to map those. That's fine, you know? <laughs> um, and then after a little bit of conversation, the city of Harare finally was like, okay, map them. It's, you know, and the community sort of had this long conversation about like, what is valuable for them to map? Those trash piles have been cleaned up because they were mapped, right? So like having that impact of like putting stuff on a map <coughs> makes stuff real. And that's the, that lies at the heart of missing maps. Any other questions? Thank you. This is more of a comment than a question. There used to be an old uh, phrase, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I noticed that you uh, have contacted the youth but I wondered if you would consider taking your notes and presenting them for an article to um, AARP, for example, because there are a lot of retirees who are wasting their minds. <laughs> Thank you. That's Any other questions or comments? So kind of a question slash comment from a Wikipedian here. Sorry about the echo. Um, so in the Wikipedia community, we are also very interested in doing outreach work to disaster areas. As you probably know, when a typhoon or some other major incidents hit, we have dozens and sometimes hundreds of Wikipedians who go on and start writing the article about whatever the incident is. Um, and we are very interested also in getting information not only to the people who are interested in the news, but also to the people who are, who are in the area. Um, and also, of course, to donors and other people who want to help. And we also try to provide, among other things, uh, medical-related information. We try to provide translations that are going to be readable by somebody who's in the local area of, say, a disease outbreak. Um, and I was just kind of interested in your thoughts about um, what, what you might be able to do in partnership together. Um, you don't have to answer that question right now off the top of your head, but I, it's certainly something I'd love to chat more with the OpenStreetMap, and particularly a humanitarian OpenStreetMap about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm going to steal a line from uh, my friend Andrew Bray at British Red Cross. Um, when you say a lot of stuff that sounds really interesting, he says, yes, all that. So, yes, all that. <laughs> we have time for another question. Uh, I'm a tree. I live in New York City, but I'm interested in map done, map done. 
if I like to work, map with you. Your map thon, map thon, map, mapathon. Yeah, so there are mapathons all the time. If you want to host a mapathon, host a mapathon. Just email us. We'll let you know what task is is sort of the most uh, burning at the moment. Um, you know, any one time there's probably twenty or thirty different tasks on the tasking manager that are just for missing maps um, at this point. So um, just get in contact with us, any of the Red Cross folks. I think we're all pretty well branded today. Um, so um, just get in contact with us, and we'll we'll give you the whole kit. And then the last thing I'll say on that is if you're curious about how to host a mapathon on the Missing Maps website, if you go to missingmaps.org slash host, yeah. there's all the resources that you need to uh, your checklist, videos, the whole thing uh, to get involved in host a mapathon and grow your OSM community. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Or is it yeah. If you could go back to the last slide and we'll take a picture of that email. All the way back. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll make Somebody sure asked me uh, who's the institution and who's OSM in this scale. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to decline to answer that. So please give our presenter a warm thank you.